Hey, this is Mad Movie Mark with another Mad Movie Mark movie review. Thank you for joining me as I review the 1926 pirate swashbuckling silent film, The Black Pirates. Hey, right. thank you. I appreciate that. I'm reviewing every movie that has 100% fresh rate in Rotten Tomatoes. I'm giving them all a score of 1 to 10. After I watch them and score them all, I will rank them from worst to best. I started in the 1920s silent movie era. I made it to 1961, and then another movie from the 20s popped up on the 100% fresh list. So I'm going back. I'm doing the Black Pirate from 1926. Uh, this movie has 100% fresh rating from the critics and a 69, 69% fresh rating from the audience, which is not a Deal. Uh, this movie stars Douglas Fairbanks as the Black Pirates, Billy Dove as the Princess, and Sam DeGrosse as the Pirate Lieutenant. So this is the first movie I've ever seen with Douglas Fairbanks. Uh, to be perfectly honest, I had never heard of him until I uh, watched this movie. And I will say this is a this is a strong, buffy guy for such a small stature. This this gentleman. Um, I'm sure I'll go back and watch other movies with him. I know he did a version of um, Robin Hood. Uh, so. I'm, I'm a huge Robin Hood fan, so I'll probably go back and watch that. But anyway, this movie is The Black Pirate. Like I said, it is a silent film, and it's in color from 1926, uh, which is amazing. Uh, when I say it's in color, I really mean it's red and green, basically. Uh, most of the movie is uh, in red, and then some of it is also in shades of green. Uh, even in some instances where Fairbanks is swimming in the water, the water is red, which is very ominous. It's, I don't know if they're, I mean, obviously they're not, I don't think they're going for like uh, blood in the water type of thing, but it is pretty cool uh, the pirate movie to see them in red water. It's uh, pretty amazing. So the movie has a pretty, I would say a pretty simple storyline to it. Uh, the, in the very beginning of the movie, we are shown a band of pirates who have captured a pirate ship. They have plundered everything from it and they are now uh, with the crew of that pirate ship on board. They're going to blow it out of the, they're going to blow it up. They're going to kill everyone and blow up the ship. So they end up doing that, but there's uh, two survivors who make it to shore from that ship. One of them is the Black Pirates, and the other one is his father. Uh, his father, unfortunately, passes away, does not make it, but the Black Pirate vows to avenge his father's death and to get revenge on these pirates who have killed him. Uh, so he ends up infiltrating the band of pirates by challenging their greatest swordsman to a sword fight, uh, and he wins the sword fight. Uh, the, the pirate lieutenant says, well, that's well and good, son. You did a great job there, but there's more to being a pirate than just being a great swordsman. Uh, so the black pirate says, ah, yes, I thought you would ask me this question, or I thought you would say that. So next time you go to steal a pirate, you go to steal a ship, I will steal it single-headedly. I won't need any of you. I'll go on board and I'll do it myself. So he ends up doing that through a little bit of trickery. And, um, you know, uh, there's actually, a, I think, a really famous scene here where he ends up getting he's on top of a sail and he takes a knife and he like slides down the sail I'm pretty sure Mythbusters did something about this, but it's been a long time since I've watched Mythbusters, so I might be wrong. They did so many things when it comes to movies, but anyway, it's a really famous scene, and what he's doing on the ship, his like acrobat, his acrobats, his um, presence, his ability to do all these complicated 
stunts. It's it's absolutely amazing. I don't honestly. I haven't researched. I should have researched, researched this, but I don't know if Douglas Fairbanks did his own stunts. But if he did, uh, absolutely crazy uh, what he's doing. Uh, there's action every second on the ship um, where he's either climbing on something or he's like walking across a rope or he's like you know sliding down a sail. It's it's actually pretty amazing what he does. So he ends up capturing the ship. So he says to his crew basically, hey, I have an idea. I took this ship without firing a single round. I didn't fire a single cannon. I didn't have to kill anyone. Uh, well, maybe he did, I don't know. But anyway, I didn't fire a single round. The ship is completely intact. Why don't we just take the ship instead of blowing it up? Wouldn't that, wouldn't that make more sense if we just take the ship and we could sell it? Uh, we could sell the crew. You know, we can just, we can make money off of this. Um, everyone is on board with this except for the pirate lieutenant. Uh, for some reason, <laughs> he's, not, he's not on board. He, he doesn't. I think he just doesn't want to lose his crew. He sees that Fairbanks is like he has all this charisma, and he's like you know is able to lead these people into battle, and he doesn't want to lose that. So he says, oh, "I don't really. I don't know if this is something we should do." Uh, and he says, "I'll tell you what. If uh, if we get there and we can sell it, that's fine. But if not, we'll blow it up." <laughs> We eventually also see a couple women on board who were hiding. Now, uh, one of the women is younger and the pirate lieutenant wants to, uh, I don't know if he wants to make her his bride or just um, have some sort of, you know, relations with her. Um, and, but so do the other pirates. They all want to have relations with this woman. So they draw straws and the person who draws the shortest straw wins. Now it ends up being the pirate lieutenant. So he goes to collect his spoils, you know, <laughs> take the woman and, you know, do what he wants with her. Uh, but Fairbanks uh, says, no, 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 this is, look at this, this necklace she's wearing. She's a princess. We can get a lot of money for her if we sell her. We shouldn't, uh, we shouldn't do anything like that to her. Um, but I'll tell you what, if we can't sell the boat and it doesn't work out, then you can have her. How about that? <laughs> so Pilot Lieutenant is fine with that. He ends up creating this plan to sink the vessel so that it never makes it to port so that he retains his crew and he ends up getting the woman um but Fairbanks you know he kind of I think he becomes wise to this and he ends up challenging the pirate lieutenant so I believe at the end of it, he he kills the lieutenant the lieutenant dies and in a very bizarre very bizarre and not great ending I would say um so I mean if you're gonna go watch this 1926 uh, colored silent movie. I'm going to give away the ending here. Um, so at the end of the movie, we learn that the Black Pirate is actually a duke. Uh, so he's of royalty. And uh, the girl who he said was a princess, who I thought he was just joking so that he could, uh, you know, save her. <laughs> and he just made this up. Uh, she actually is a princess. And he says, uh, you know, I don't want to be too forward here, but I'd like to ask for your hand in marriage. <laughs> And she says yes, which is so weird. I mean, he mentions early in the movie that he, um, or I guess in the middle of the movie, that he believes in love at first sight and that this um, relationship that he has with her, he thought was love at first sight. I thought he was joking, to be honest. I thought this was part of his like ruse to save the ship and to save everyone and to get revenge. Like, it was hard for me to decipher, like, if he's actually being serious sometimes or if he's just trying to fool people so that he could continue this game where he gets revenge. Uh, but apparently he was truthful when he said that it was love at first sight and he falls in love with this woman and he asks for her hand in marriage and she says yes and that's the end of the movie. The movie. Oh, it's such a it's such a killer. So the movie was I mean it was full of action. Uh, it was I love all the action in this movie. It's fantastic. The plot line is a bit loose in this movie. Uh, not too I mean it's it's very easy to follow. I would say up until a point until at the end where they're like, hey, guess what? Uh, I want to marry. I didn't see that coming. Like I honestly I didn't feel that there was like this really love attraction between Fairbanks and between Dove or I guess the Duke of the Princess. Um I didn't see the chemistry. I don't it didn't make any sense to me. And it was just very sappy at the end. It was like, um, okay, this is dumb, basically. This ending is so stupid. Like 
there's no, it, it just felt like there was no payoff at the end. Like, sure, he won and, you know, he got what he wanted. But if, if they had just ended it at, like, the, um, the pirate lieutenant losing and he got his revenge, then it would have been fine. But then they throw in at the end, they pigeonhole this uh, marriage and this love story that was supposed to be happening throughout the movie. I, I just thought it was really terrible. I think they were just doing it for the sake of having a love interest in the movie and for the sake of having an Indian where two people get together and fall in love. I don't know, but it was really quite stupid, to be perfectly honest. Um, but yeah, the color, besides that, the fact that this is a black and white and it's in color. I mean, you can find color versions of like Nosferatu. Um, the Golem has a color version, but I think that this was maybe actually meant to be in color. Maybe I'm wrong about that. Whereas I don't know if Nosferatu and the Golem were. I think they were might have just been colorized later because in Nosferatu and in the Golem, you see a lot of different colors. You'll see like yellows, you'll see reds, you'll see blues, you'll see greens, purples, whatever. But I mean, it's like the lenses are changing colors on us. <laughs> but in this movie, it's really just green and red. That's all it is. So like I wonder if like this is just an early, an early trying, at, you know, an early attempt at doing color, um, and it looks really good. I mean, green and red looks good for this movie. It, it, it's not bad. Um, but like I said, yeah, the action is fantastic. I mean, the acting Fairbanks. There's some weird acting that he does in this movie that's really over the top. Like I realize it's a um, it's a silent movie, so you're supposed to be acting with your hands and with your gestures. But I mean, I saw. I mean, I've seen the kid. Um, I've seen the last laugh. The man who laughs. And they don't do this type of over the top acting where that doesn't really warrant it. I mean, he'll do like all these weird scenes with his hands and then like you read the text and it's like, okay, was that really warranted? <laughs> like, is he really showing that much emotion when he's trying to talk? And I don't really know, um, but it, it was okay. I, I thought the acting, like I said, was a little over the top. The action is really the, the reason to watch this movie. This movie is definitely not as good as Captain Blood, um, which is also a silent movie. Uh, Captain Blood had more action. It had more of a story. It was also about pirates, uh, but you felt like you were more um, invested in what was going on in Captain Blood. Whereas this one, it's like, I'm invested in him, but I'm more invested in watching like his action on screen and, and what he's going to do. And like, uh, is he going to fly down something? Is he going to walk across a bunch of ropes? Is he going to hop over like the ship? I don't know. The ship, I mean, I was more in tuned as to like what he was doing physically on the screen than what he was actually doing uh, like with lines and with dialogue and um, with, you know, with emotions on the screen. It was more about his action. Um, Anyway, I thought the movie was okay. Definitely not the best silent picture I've ever seen, but also not the worst silent picture movie I've ever seen. Uh, so, you know, it's somewhere in the middle there, but I'm going to give it a seven and a half out of 10. Thank you. I hope you join me for my next review, which will also be today, uh, which is going to be Sanjuro. Thank you. I hope you have a great day.